like you can use stew beef or chicken or whatever, but I would like to make it fun for the kids. They can help make the meatballs. Again, we're going to get one or two cans of each vegetable that we like. Open it up. Pour it in the pot. Make it hot. <laughs> I don't care. I don't get to get the subscribers here. Man. Just put a little bag of chips. Damn this, please. Mm -hmm. Give me a little bag of chips. No. Please. Guys, she won't feed me. I don't like her. I haven't ate since like 10 o'clock this morning. I don't like her. I don't have to feed her. <clears throat> I'm going to be good in one second. I have no idea what I grabbed. Okay. That's good. Ooh, and she got it. Sheesh. All right. Okay. I know. I, I have some tips. It's serious <laughs> Me, I've got corn, diced potatoes, carrots, peas, green beans. And then we're going to have whole peeled tomatoes and tomato paste. stuck in, do not stick your finger in there to try to get it out. If you turn the can upside down, most of the time it comes out. It'll lift the lid open. Get you a little magnet or something. Just don't try to pull. I've done that before. Mm, it didn't end good. It hurt. I mean, it hurt. <laughs> yeah, it didn't end well. <laughs> I've already washed my hands, of course. Because with the peeled tomatoes, I like to crush them a little bit. My mom is the one that made it. I think my grandma made it before, but she didn't call it meatball soup, and I think she. But this is a good way to get, uh, like, if you have a lot of leftover vegetables from other dinners and stuff, but the butter and seasoning in those will add flavor to your food. Just, we don't usually have leftovers, so I don't have to buy cans. Because my children don't know how to leave a leftover. Mm -hmm. It's against their religion. Mm -hmm. I used to have leftovers, but now they got bigger now. Not anymore, not so much. And I think it's fun to crush the tomatoes. The kids can do it too. I'm just not cool enough for my kids to help me anymore, so. They don't like me like that anymore. They're teenagers now. And apparently I'm not very cool. But I think I'm pretty awesome. They just don't. <coughs> the little ones still like me a little bit. A very little bit. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm using an old tiny can of can. Really? The thing is not hot yet. So I'm going to reach out in here and crush them. And trust me, again, I'm going to reiterate I haven't washed my hands. <laughs> I'm about to wash them again. <laughs> And a lot of things, uh, lot of, one thing people don't consider is if you use a handheld can opener, you have to wash it. Because it's been down in different things, and if you let that stuff sit on there, it can create germs. So, just remember, if you use a handheld, wash it. 
and you wash your dishes. I always have to throw a little food safety tip in there. You know, I never actually thought about it in the past until I took food safety for my restaurant job. And that's where I found that out. Because so, I used to do the same thing, I just used to use it with the hook. But the more you think about it, it's like, yeah, yeah, that's probably true. It probably does create a, an environment for germs. them help and it's meatballs and fun things like that they'll be more interested in eating it because they help make it you know because the chef always tastes their food it has to make sure it tastes it better. Because a lot of these things like salt, pepper, spices are to taste. You can't just... Because even if the recipe calls for a certain amount of one thing or the other, it might not be the way you like it. It might not be to your taste. So you may need a little more salt or a little less. So that's always more like salt and pepper and stuff to taste most of the time. With savory foods and stuff. I'm still going to have to add salt to this. It's going to end up being about a tablespoon of salt. And last but not least, your tomato paste. That's going to give, that, give it that even more of a hearty tomato paste. But the tomato taste isn't overwhelming because of everything else that's in the soup. So. Yep. I used to use... Um, Beef stew seasoning, so if that's more something that you like, you can get beef stew seasoning too, instead of using all the tomatoes and stuff. And with these little pans and probably the big pans, you can, if you open the bottom and the top, you can take the top off. And then stick your finger on the bottom and slide it in. It comes out a lot faster that way. The tomato paste is really thick. That's how I have to do the little pans because I don't really have a spoon that fits down in there. Oh. Now the only thing about it is, you know, the top, the bottom of the can will come out, so you have to reach in there. Just be careful. Probably take a small rubber spatula and get down in the can if you don't want to do it the other way. So you can get all the tomato paste out. And tomato paste by itself is a very weird taste. I don't ever do that. You tried it before? Yes. I mean, it wasn't very good. That's way too much tomato flavor. They also have concentrated tomato paste. You can buy them too. Just remember to refrigerate it after you use it because I didn't and I got hold on it. And I didn't think it was going to be very good to eat after that. If you're cutting up vegetables as with everything else, don't cut up meat and vegetables on the same cut board unless you wash them. Unless you 
it's just inviting in germs. You don't want to do that. I mean, unless you kind of want to be sick. That's what you do is worse. Actually, it's about right. Add maybe another little teaspoon of salt. And don't turn the salt container all the way upside down. <laughs> Get way too much salt. <laughs> I always tilt it more in the back there so you can control how much goes in. You can have a little bit more control. You don't have to. And trust the old lid on there. And here comes the fun part. You can either use Elba macaronis or egg noodles, whichever one you prefer. Sometimes I like egg noodles, sometimes I like macaronis. And today we're going to use some macaronis. This is a two pound box. I'll probably use about half of it. I'm letting the meat fall right now. And as soon as it's done, we'll make the meatballs, pop them in the oven, and then put them in the soup. And the soup will be done at that point, as long as the nibbles are done. So it's not actually that long of a process if you want to make a quick soup for dinner. Maybe it takes about an hour at tops. I mean, if you use already thawed out meat, of course, it's going to go faster because you don't have to thaw your meat. <laughs> All right, we'll be back in a little bit to check up on it. All right, so it's been about 15 minutes. I got the, the cap on about five, and it's boiling, so you don't add your macaroni and stuff until it starts boiling. In the first couple minutes, you probably want to want to stir it a few times so the macaroni doesn't stick to the bottom and my soup happens to be pretty thick because of all the the um, tomato paste so i'm just going to get a bowl of water and kind of thin it down a little bit so the noodles can cook a little faster i mean they'll still cook but they won't cook as fast spill water on the stove and everywhere else. Okay. We'll see if the meat's thawed out and if it is we'll start making our meatballs. Oh yep, yeah, we're pretty good. Alright. This is regular run of the mill meatball. I meant meat, hamburger meat. And it's not anything special. So we just went grocery shopping, so we have some stuff all over the counter. Okay. And usually I get my stuff out first, but today I didn't do it. Okay. And then bags jumped out at me. Okay. I get a big pan. I don't have to put any any grease in or anything in it because it's going to be grease, trust me, by me. I'm use my trusty old knife to cut it open. I'm going to do the little ones first. You can tell by this dark texture, this is good meat. Or this dark color, but you're just basically gonna roll, roll meatballs. I've got three pound roll and one pound roll because you gotta make a lot of meatballs, mm -hmm. or people will just steal the meatballs out of it. And I think this meat is a little bit more lean, so it probably would go with the 80 20 like hamburger meat, but this was free, so it's for me. And I'm using it anyway. Mm. 
And for a lot for kids, this is like the most fun part, making the meatballs. And for adults, I kind of like making the meatballs too. It's fun. You can make them as big or as small as you want to. My mom actually browns the ground beef and just, you know, drains it and pours it in there because of meatball thieves. So you can do it that way too if you want to. Meaty, meaty meatballs. <laughs> Something I forgot to do, which I'll ask Chrissy to do real quick, is to preheat my oven to 350. Oopsie. Thank you, Sushi. She really didn't want to be on camera today, but. Really? But. I didn't want to touch the stove. But hamburger meat juice all over my hands. I don't think the I don't think the germs would be very nice. Mm -hmm. I don't think people want E. coli. Maybe some other day, but today we don't want E. coli. And that's really why you want to make sure that you cook steaks and stuff are okay for older people to do rare I meant for you like middle aged people but not really young kids or old people because if there's anything in it their immune systems are not as high as other people's so you gotta be careful but with hamburger meat I know some weird people eat them rare or medium but I just I always cook my hamburger meat thoroughly I'm not like that. I can't do it. And see, you can see this has got more fat in it, so the meatballs hold together better. That's why that other meat's a darker color. It has less fat in it. I mean, you can use it as you see. It still makes a meatball, but it might fall apart a little bit more. It won't hold together as much. And I don't really do any additives or anything in there. I just regular meat <laughs> meatballs. You can add spices to it stuff if you want to. I try to make them smaller, but I always end up making them big. I don't know why. That's just me. <coughs> I guess I like big balls. <laughs> I know, that was a lame joke, sorry. You're done. That was very immature to laugh at it, but <laughs> I did it anyway. <laughs> See, the cooks I've been around have just been old mountain women and stuff like that and there's a lot of good recipes because my parents both grew up poor so they had to be inventive and use cheaper ingredients to make their food i imagine theirs tasted better because they probably grew their own vegetables though they probably tasted better than this but uh, i have a brown thumb i can't grow things i kill them I can't, I can't do plants. I wish I could, but I can't. My mother can, but I can't. My mother-in-law can, but just not me. Well, you grew some children. Yeah, I mean, but I can't grow fruits and vegetables. I'm terrible at it. I think plants look at me and then die like, oh, no, I'm not going home with her. She's a plant murderer. And at Dollar Tree, they got a kitchen measurement chart, a conversion chart. Because sometimes kids like to play with their stuff and lose your cups and stuff. So, if you want to know what a quarter of a cup is and you don't, and you don't have a whole cup measuring cup or something, it's six ounces, two six ounces of water or whatever liquid it is. 
Because, you know, my children would never lose my measure and stuff. And I don't even know why they're interested in playing with it, but whatever. And after, before and after doing, like, food on the counter and stuff, just wipe it down. Antibacterial soap. Because germs can live on surfaces for a while, so. I think I make them bigger too because it takes less time to roll bigger meatballs. <laughs> Not gonna lie. What? I hear the washing machine. I do know that. The kids are being quiet and it's a little scary. Not gonna lie. It's a little scary. They're too busy into their phones and PlayStation. Yeah. We didn't have a choice but to go in the kitchen or do something because we didn't really have much else to do. I mean, we had Nintendo and stuff, but I guess when it, the graphics weren't that great, it was got boring pretty quick, I guess. Because we still went outside and played. <laughs> you didn't see us until dark. Until the street lights came on. Then if you weren't home, you got in trouble. Unless, of course, you made a phone call to the parents where you're at and why you're late and how late you're going to be. That's a, some of the problem nowadays. There's not enough supervision on our kids. But, but that's how they get hurt. It's just like the situation my son's in at school. He's being bullied. The teachers claim they don't know anything about it. But that's because there's 50 students and one teacher. There's not enough supervision on these kids. And as parents, we, we don't teach them to be respectful of other people and uh, to you know, have empathy to you know put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Like, how are they going to feel? Now, sometimes we kind of go off at the mouth and talk about people and stuff like that, and we shouldn't, because it teaches them to do the same thing. So we got to remember to watch what we say <laughs> around the, our kids. So we can't expect them to do the right thing if we don't. Remember the old uh, saying, monkey see, monkey do. It's pretty much the truth. And if you're in any position of power, just remember that with anybody, they're somebody's son, daughter, or brother, so treat them the way you'd want your family treated. Don't talk down to them with us. I know it can be frustrating. I've been a manager for a long time. But you have to be good to people. Loyal employees are a very important thing. If you spend money on your loyal employees, then they'll stay and you won't have to keep retraining and all that stuff. If you're good to the ones that have been there. I think it's going to cost you a little more because of raises and stuff, but it'll cost you a lot less than having to keep training people. And you got to remember everybody learns differently. Some people are better hands on, some people are better at reading it, and some people are better at hearing it. 
Maybe they're not the problem, maybe it's you. <laughs> you have to be humble enough to, to know that. It's a critter I'm running. <laughs> Y'all gonna all of a sudden see nobody in the kitchen. There might be a critter in the refrigerator. Or under it or something. No. Mm -hmm. well, we got two dogs. So one of them, she likes to chase and bite things, so I don't think it'd be alive if it was. Mm -hmm. I hope she wouldn't keep it as a friend. My little Yorkie poo and the poodle that I, my little small poodle that I had, they they would kill them. Mm -hmm. They play with them like a cat. It's so weird. I think only cats play with stuff, but dogs do too. I know that's not something we really need to talk about more. About to try to eat. I'm sorry. <laughs> He's random. I know. I'll get out. I try not to be, but it's me. I can't help it. She can't help it. For about mm, 45 minutes or so. You want an internal temperature of 155 or more if you use a meat thermometer. And with meat, if it's tense, it's well done. The softer it is and the easier it is to push in, the more rare it's going to be. So if you don't happen to have one. Check and see how our soup's doing. I don't know why they make metal lids to pots. Make them hot. <laughs> and then, like, they expect you to not burn the heck out of yourself. Mm. Noodles are not done. No, so. Mm. We're just going to let that simmer for another few minutes and then we'll. Be back checking on it again. I'm gonna clean the kitchen. <laughs> so the meatballs aren't done yet, but the soup is. The noodles are done. So I just put it on low, so it can simmer until the until the meatballs get done. Okay, we'll be back. All right, we're back. Meatballs are done, and this is a very simple process. We just gonna drop them in. Like I said, my mommy used to cook this for me. And, and the other people that, you know, aren't as awesome as me, the other sisters. Like Chrissy and April Carey, they're just not as cool as me. So. Yeah, she got off the bed. Yeah. I'm pretty awesome, you know. I'm just draining some of the grease out of it because I don't want all that grease in the soup. That might not taste that good. That's your end result. It was really, really yummy. Now we need now some crackers and we're ready to eat.